What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to check out a new extension from Curic that adds different functions to the measure tool. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you can find Curic Measure++ Plus Plus on Curic's website. I'll also link to it in the notes down below. And so this is a paid extension. It's $6.90. And basically what it is, is it's a tool built on top of SketchUp's overlay engine. So Curic is one of the only developers I've seen that's actually doing a whole bunch with the overlay engine um, and the way that can kind of display overlays and things like that. Some of the functions that he's coming up with are pretty interesting. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what this tool is good for and what you can use it for. Okay, and so when you install Curic Measure++, Plus Plus, what it's going to do is it's going to give you an option right here to toggle Measure++ Plus Plus on. All that button does is it just toggles the overlays on for Measure++ Plus Plus so that the tool is going to work. And so it just kind of sits in the background, and then the way that it works is when you activate the Tape Measure tool, it's going to start giving you additional things inside of your model. And so the first thing it can do is it can do things like recognizing simple shapes. So say I was to select or, um, and so say I was to toggle this on, with this box selected, well, notice how if I move my mouse off of the box, it's going to go through and it's going to detect the X, Y, and Z lengths of this object right here. So it'll give you kind of an overlay of those different shapes. And so say that I was to do the same thing with the cylinder, it'll give me the radius and also the length of the cylinder. With this longer bar, it's just going to basically give me the same information we had before, um, length and volume. So it's a quick way to see that information um, based on the bounding boxes of the object. Now, let's say that we were to take this and we were to rotate it inside of the group right here. Notice what this is doing is this is giving me the length of the actual bounds of the object itself. It's not giving me the length of this distance right here, um, but it can recognize those different objects. Now, one of the interesting things about this, this is something that Keurig demos in one of his videos, is not only can it um, measure things about those objects, say that we were to take this object and we were to create some copies, right? So say that we were to do a times five right here. If I select all of these and then activate this tool, notice how this is going to find the radius around which all of these objects um, have been moved, but it's also going to give you the segment length between each one of these right here. So you can mouse over this and see the lengths of the different segments um, between the different points that are in here like this. Now, one thing I haven't tried is say that I was to take one of them and move them out of the way and then run this. So if I was to activate this tool right here, notice how it's not going to give me that anymore because these aren't on a radius. So if I was to re remove that from the selection, then it picks up the radius right here. So this is an interesting application as well, being able to see um, not only the radius of the objects that are in here, but also the distance between the different segments like this. Now, if you click on one of these, that's going to go away. And so in addition to being able to measure rotational arrays, it also can measure the spacing um, of arrays that are in a straight line as well. Now, in addition, this does also give you the ability to measure between different points and pin those measurements. So like one of the things that's a little bit weird is the tape measure still remains functional while you're doing this. You can still add guides and things like that, but you're also getting these overlays that pop up. And so one of the things this will do is if you click between two points like this, it's going to add a dimension measurement in your 3D space like this. And those remain there if you rotate around because it's using the overlays engine. And so if you ever want those to go away, notice how it tells you um, press escape three times to clear all overlay measurements and those will go away. But you can use that in order to measure those different distances. But you can also use this to see things like the thickness of an object. So notice how when I mouse over a face, it's basically casting a ray to the other side and it's measuring the thickness of the object right here. Now, if I was to push pull an opening in this box right here and then do that, notice how if I put my mouse over here and I'm just going to hit the escape key three times, notice how it'll give me the distance between this point and the other point right here. So say I was to add a measurement just so we can kind of double check that. Notice how it's showing me the distance between here and here. 
like this. And so one place where that could be valuable is say that you have a room like this one and say that this room has a little offset in it like this. And then we'll just extrude our room to 3D. Well, what this tool is going to do is notice how it gives me a distance between this line or this face and the opposite face over here. So you can use that in order to measure the distance in here. It's almost like using a laser tape measure. Now, one thing I wish you could do is I wish you could double click in here and have it like maintain that overlay like this. It doesn't actually does that do that. What it does instead is if you double click, it's going to basically set a plane right here is kind of like your set plane from which you're measuring that distance like this. So now if I mouse over this other face, notice how it's going to give me the distance right here. So you can double click in order to set a plane and then measure from that plane inside of your model, which is actually also really valuable. Um, and I don't need all these guides in here, but if you are trying to measure the interior of a space really quickly, this could be a good tool for that. Then you can always just toggle it off when you don't want those overlays anymore. So interesting application from that standpoint. And so if you have a sloped face, like this one, notice how you can also mouse over the face and see what the slope is like this. And so you can also hover over an edge, hold the shift key and then mouse over this. And it's going to tell you the angle between two different edges. So in this case, notice how it's giving me a 90 right here, a 90 right here, and then a 125 over here like this. So if you do want to double check slopes, it can do that. I kind of wish it had the ability to then lock that in here, right? And it really doesn't. Like if I double click on this, it does the plane thing, but I kind of wish that it would uh, pin that angle in here using the overlay so that I can see what that angle is later. It doesn't currently do that. And so if you do have something like a wall, you can also use this and I want to er escape out of I want to escape out of that plane mode in here, but if I mouse over a wall, notice how it's going to give me a thickness, but then if I mouse over edges, it also tells me what the gap is between an edge and the, uh, and any edge that's kind of like parallel to it, right? So notice how it's showing me the different gaps. It'll also show me the thickness of the wall. Now, theoretically, what this is supposed to do, and it's not really doing it, but it's supposed to be able to actually detect an opening. Um, so any face with a rectangular opening, it's supposed to detect the length and the width the opening. I've not been able to do that, whether I group the object, whether no matter what I do, I can't get it to pick up on the actual opening itself. So I've not been able to do that, but theoretically that functionality is inside of the tool. If anybody knows how that works, let me know in the comments down below. And so the other thing it can do is if you mouse over vertices on an arc, it can also find the midpoint of that arc and tell you what the radius is and also the angle, right? of the different pieces in here. So it knows that these are at 105 degrees as well. So it picks up some interesting measurements in there as well. And so anyway, this is an interesting one for me. So there are situations where I could see this being extremely valuable. I don't know that it would be a day-to-day -day tool for me. I do like the kind of like dual laser, laser measure of a space. I think that could be extremely valuable. And I think this could be an interesting tool depending on what your use case is. But I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What do you think about this particular tool? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.